Connect Church, my name is Jeremy, and we are so excited that you are joining us. We have an awesome service in store for you. It is Game Sunday. You guys like Game Sunday? Yeah, we're gonna play some game. We're gonna play a game today, and a very special sermon this week. In fact, it's a kitchen table finale. Pastor Steve Otley is going to join us, and he's going to wrap up our our series, our talk on uh, racism, race, and injustice. So thank you to you, Pastor uh, Yanni. Thank you to all of you who have contributed and helped lead this discussion on race and racism and injustice. And we're so glad that you have joined us today. Are you ready for a fun service? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Then Yanni, tell them what to do. No, the video. Go video. Would you do service for Jesus? 
king there is in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power on your king. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power. In the precious blood of the Lamb, there is power, power on the Lord King. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power on the Lord King. In the precious blood of the Lamb, so much power, so much power.
I will love you, Lord, my strength. Come on. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever, all my days. I will love you, God. Come on, sing to him. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. Come on, church, take refuge. And I will love you. Father, I just want to give you thanks for moments like this when we can gather together and lift up your name. Father, I'm grateful for uh, moments like this where we get to seek your face and hear how you want to lead us, how you want to speak to us, how you want to build us up. And uh, Father, you actually uh, command us, Lord, to just be grateful, uh, to always be giving thanks, to always be rejoicing and to be joyful. And Father, in times like uh, these, it seems like choosing joy or being joyful feels out of our control or, or a demand that is beyond us, God. So Father, I ask that you would send your spirit to fill us, to empower us, God, to, to strengthen us, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that uh, just like in Psalm 23, when you say that you'll prepare a table in the presence of our enemies, Father, I pray that in, 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 face, in, in front of all of the circumstances that we face, uh, through all of the unknowns and uncertainties, God, I pray that this would be a moment, today would be a moment where we actually get to feast on you. Father, I pray that we feast on your goodness, on your presence in the midst of all of this and God I just ask Lord that you would give us vision that you would give us wisdom I pray that the circumstances in our life that we truly would be able to see it the way that you see it God I pray that you would give us wisdom uh, wisdom to navigate these circumstances that we've never been through before father and, and God I'm just thinking through of all of the parents who have to decide how and when uh, the kids go back to school and and the teachers in the congregation that have to navigate their own safety father I pray that you would give us wisdom and vision and protection in this time, Lord. God, I pray that we would experience your closeness and your nearness, God. 
And Father, I just pray that even as you are unfolding and unpacking the transformation that is happening in in, in Connect Church and churches all across the globe around uh, racial injustice and racism, Father, I thank you, Lord, that your heart for this is shining brighter than ever. And Father, I just pray that your work, that the work of your spirit as you're transforming our lives would just continue to work powerfully and and gently and quickly all at the same time. Father, do uh, all that you want in our lives, God. God, I pray that all of the walls that you are constantly breaking down when you walk the earth yourself, God, I pray that by your spirit, we would be able to do the same. Father, we lift up this morning. We lift up the families that are worshiping. And God, I just pray uh, for just your spirit to continue to draw near in your name. Amen. Psalm 67. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy, because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear him. Hi, church family. How are you? This is Liz Greer. Just saying hello. Miss you guys. Um, just want to give you a quick update on what's going on with the Greer family. So far, we're doing well. Um, we're staying connected, and um, we're keeping pretty much busy. Our schedules are very busy. We are continuously working. Um, thank goodness to that. My husband is a frontliner. Um, he keeps on going to work since the pandemic started. Um, myself, I'm working from home. Occasionally I go into the office. The girls um, were busy doing the schooling. They actually just finished a, a summer program for a school to prepare to prepare themselves for grade um, the next coming up grades that, that they're gonna be in. Uh, they've been involved in doing a lot of art, um, drawing. We do a lot of bike riding. We watch shows. We watch some shows, and we are primarily engaged on reading daily um, a Bible verse, and then we'll talk about it and and see how it applies to our lives and. How to become better in everything that we do. Um, yeah, all is great. We miss you. And uh, so far, we're enjoying the beautiful summer days that we have. And we are planning ahead for this September coming up, which uh, school is going to be reopening and we're going to be getting prepared. So thanks as well. Uh, sending all our love and greetings to our Connect Church family and friends. Liz, it was so great to hear from you and hear how your family is doing. We miss you guys, and we are just uh, so excited that you're able to send in that family room. Thank you. My name is Kirby, welcome to church. I'm one of the hosts here at Connect, and I am bringing you your church news. If you're a guest for, uh, watching for the first time today, welcome. We're glad that you found us online. Uh, you can find out more about our church on our church website, uh, connectajax.com, or you can just uh, connect with one of our pastors. We have our senior pastor, Pastor Yanni, and then we have Pastor Arnie and Pastor Jer, and they're all um, able to be communicated with, and you can just pick their brains, and we're just glad that you're here. Um, I have a big announcement this morning. I'm wearing my sunglasses because on August 30th, we are gonna be doing our first church outside. That's right, you heard me right. We're going to get together uh, outside on August 30th. There will be no online service unless it rains. 
Um, and we are going to meet together uh, while being able to still social distance and breathe the lovely fresh air that the uh, warm summer days bring us. So uh, pl put that into your calendars. I will be giving you guys more information at next Sunday service about where and um, all that jazz, but we are excited to finally be able to meet in person safely. And so we hope that you can make it August 30th, Sunday, August 30th. Get ready to be there and pray for good, good weather. All right, during the week, we still have our Wednesday night prayer groups going. Thursdays, the kids are meeting and Fridays, the youth are meeting. And there's um, small groups reopening up again in September for online. Uh, so just let us know if you wanna get connected or if you wanna start a small group yourself. Um, we can definitely hook you up with uh, materials for that. And it's all done virtually right now, so you don't have to even clean anything. It'll be awesome if you wanted to host that. Just let us know, okay? Uh, we want to say a big, big thank you to everybody who continues to donate to the church. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to be able to still offer that with e-transfers. You can just use this email or you can go on to our church website or use our church app and you can just uh, donate that way already. Now it is time to mix it up and it's not going to be um, a dance today because it is game Sunday. So get ready uh, to have a little friendly competition because it is time to mix it it up are you ready i'm ready because it is game sunday and if you are new to our church welcome but at our church we play a game every month even in our live services with the kids and the adults because we believe the community that it builds is so important that we have fun together not just the kids alone but kids the adults the youth the young adults the seniors and everybody intergenerationally gets to build community together so i hope that you'll play along uh kids that you can play along too and here's what i suggest all right this game is called before or after and the way it plays is that i'm gonna say uh do you think pastor yanni our lead pastor, our amazing, awesome lead pastor, do you think that he was born before or after whatever it is I say? So for example, do you think Pastor Yanni was born before or after the Bible was written? All right, go ahead, get your answers in. All right, so here's what I suggest. Kids, I suggest that one side of the room be before and after be the other side of the room, and so you run to the side or walk to the side of the room that you think is your answer, before or after. The rest of us will just stay in our seats and we'll just type it in the chat, okay? So the answer is <laughs> after. Pastor was born way after the Bible was written, okay? So do you understand how the game's played? All right, then let's play before or after. Here we go. Do you think Pastor was born before or after Google? Go ahead. Get your answers in, kids. Run to the side of the room that you think. Do you think Pastiani was born before or after Google? Come on, chat. Let me hear you. All right, here we go. The answer is in three, two, one. After. He was born after. No, I'm just kidding. Before. Gotcha. Pastiani was born before Google was started. Yes, he is 12 years older than Google. And I know what you're thinking. Whoa. Yeah, you thought Google had been around forever. No. Not that long, actually. Google started in 1998. That's crazy. All right, how, are, how about this? Apple, what about Apple? All right, now I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, the, the company, the, the computer company, the, the iPhone, iPad, the MacBooks, right? So I'm recording this whole service on my iPhone. Do you think Pastiani was born before or after the Apple company? All right. Go ahead, give me answers, let me see. Oh, some kids running that way, some kids running that way. I like it, awesome, good, thanks for participating. Here we go, the answer in three, two, one is after. Apple was actually started 10 years before Passiani was born. So if you answered after, then you were correct. All right, the next one is Nike. All right, what do you think? 
Do you think Pastiani was born before or after that shoe company that's kind of taken over everything? Uh, do you think Pastiani was born before or after Nike was started? The final answer, your answer is in three, two, one. Pastiani was born after Nike was started. Nike is actually 22 years older than Pastiani. Amazing. All right, what about Nintendo? Go ahead, get in your answers. Do you think Pastiani was born before or after Nintendo? Some of you are watching and are wondering, what is Nintendo? It's that the, the gaming stuff that uh, the kids are always playing. Yes. All right, so do you think Pastiani was born before or after Nintendo was started? I think this answer is going to shock some of you. No changing your answer. The answer in three, two, one. He was born after Nintendo was started. And I'm sure most of you got that right. However, here's what's going to shock you. He was born, Nintendo actually started 97 years before Pastiani. What? That's right, they actually started in 1889 as a toy company. And they only started making consoles in, uh, in 1977, which is nine years before Bastiani was born. And here's what's crazy, is Nintendo actually only became popular one year before Bastiani was born in 1985. And if you haven't figured it out by now, Bastiani was born in 1986. Yes, thank you for those that were helping me. All right. All right. How about the world reigning National Basketball Association champions of the world, your Toronto Raptors? Do you think Pastiani was born before or after the Toronto Raptors? All right. So, help. Oh, there we go, some kids. Okay. Nice job. Here we go, chat. Here we go. Awesome. Here we go. And the answer in three, two, one is Pastor Yanni was born before the Toronto Raptors. He's nine years older than the Toronto Raptors. Isn't that crazy? Some of you are like, I remember when those Raptors were born. Uh-huh. All right, here we go. What about me? What about me? Do you think I was born before or after? Or, sorry, do you think Pastor Yanni was born before or after me? Get in your answers. Let me know your answers. Come on now. Come on now. Uh, now, this might be tricky because uh, I'm obviously way more mature, so that might throw it off, you know. <laughs> you know th your answer is in three, two, one. Pastiani was born before me. He is one year older than me. So he was born in 1986. I was born in 1987. And I'm sure most of you didn't get that because of my maturity. It threw you way off. All right, last round. Let's do last round. Do you think Pastiani was born before or after Cineplex, the place where we rent, not the actual building, the company. Do you think Pastiani was born before or after Cineplex movie theaters? Get in your answers. Oh, there goes some kids. Oh, oh, we got some difference of opinions. All right, here we go. The answer in three, two, one. Pastiani was born ah before. <laughs> Pastiani was born 13 years before Cineplex. They actually only started in 1999. Raise your hand if you were shocked by that. Mm-hmm, I was. That blew me away. Well, awesome job. Let me know in the chat, how many did you get right? How many kids did you get right? Uh, congratulations if you got more than one right, because who cares? We had fun, we, uh, we like to have fun at church. Uh, but why, why play that game? Well, church, we want you to know that God does not care whether you were born before or after Nike or before or after Blockbuster or Cineplex or the Toronto Raptors. He doesn't care how old we are. The Bible says, let the little children come unto me. And it doesn't, it doesn't say anywhere in our Bible that if you're too old or too young, that he has a different mission for us. The Bible actually says that we all have the same mission. It's to go into the world and preach the gospel, to tell our friends and our family how much Jesus loves them, how much God, that God sent his son to die so that we could be at peace, so that we could be in heaven with him. So uh, I hope that you kids know that how much God loves you and, and needs you to, to do that mission, regardless of how young or how old you are. In just a second, Pastor Steve is going to join Pastor Yanni, our district superintendent, to finish off our kitchen table series talking about race and injustice. The Bible doesn't care whether you're black, 
you're white, it doesn't matter what skin color, it doesn't matter if you're tall or you're short, whether you're, it doesn't matter what body type, it doesn't matter how old you are. The Bible says that God loves us all equally, it loves us so much and he wants us all to love each other no matter how old or how young we are or whatever, uh, whatever factors are there. So thanks for playing, I hope you had fun and I hope that you enjoy this, this conversation at the kitchen table with Pastor Yanni and Pastor Steve. Take it away gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Pastor Yoni, the lead pastor of Connect Church, and we are just so blessed that you are here with us this Sunday morning. Well, two weeks of vacation is gone, and uh, I am back, and it's good to be back. I just wanted to say thank you so much for Pastor Arnie and for Pastor Jeremy for looking after the church when I was gone. And I just wanted to say thank you for Pastor Stephen, who preached uh, last Sunday morning. And uh, I'm just so thankful that we have a team who looked after uh, the church. We originally were planning on going home to Hungary to bring our daughter, uh, Julia, who's one year old, to visit uh, my mom and my sister. And obviously because of the COVID situation, we were not able to fly, but uh, we had a, a relaxing time here in Ontario. And thank you again for the team. Uh, as many of you, most of you know and heard, uh, Mohan's mom passed away. And uh, I just would like to remind all of us to please pray for him. And especially next Tuesday, uh, when uh, they are going to have the funeral in London, England, at uh, local time, 11 a.m. I just would like uh, to ask you to please uh, keep Mohan and his family in your prayer, as, as it is uh, very difficult, as is, uh, for, for Mohan, but uh, more so because he is not able to fly home again because of the COVID virus. So please uh, pray for him. And it uh, seems like uh, many of us, many of you in the church have lost loved ones. First, we had Dawn, whose sister passed away in New Jersey, and she and Neville were able to drive uh, down and be there, and they are back safely. And then uh, Jeremy's Rush Paul <clears throat> father passed away. They had a funeral here in, in uh, Toronto and then uh, they actually flew his dad down because that was his wish that he wanted to be buried in Guyana and, uh, and now Mohan's mom in England. So I just would like to ask us now, let's just bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just would like to pray for your people. I just would like to pray for Mohan and his family. I just would like to pray, Heavenly Father, that you would comfort them and especially at this time when... Uh, they are getting ready for the funeral next Tuesday. I just pray that you would comfort them, you would bless them, and even you would help them in this devastating time. I also pray for Dawn and for her family, and I also pray for Jeremy and for his family, Heavenly Father. Please uh, surround them with your love. Please give them comfort through your Holy Spirit. And uh, may they, may they feel, uh, feel your love and your support. And may, may they experience that you are the good shepherd. And when they are, even if they, as they experience darkness, uh, you are there with them. Please uh, bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, as you heard probably this news as well, uh, <clears throat> about a week ago there was a big explosion in uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And uh, it just, there was about 150 people killed. Uh, more than 5,000 people in Jordan. They are still going through the, the ruins, hoping to find somebody who is there. And I just thought that we as a church, uh, we should contribute and try to be a blessing uh, for people who are there. So uh, today uh, we are going to, today and the next two weeks, we are going to have the opportunity to uh, collect some funds. And we are going to have a special donation today. And again, online you can do the next two weeks. If you go to the Bible app or if you go to our homepage uh, and if you just go to give, uh, then after you put in the amount, you can choose the, the fund you want to designate your money to. And you, you will fi find this new fund we created. It's called Crisis Respond Fund. And you can donate money there for the next two weeks. This will be available for you. And whatever we receive, we will send it to a Canadian office. And then the Canadian office will send it to Lebanon, to the Beirut uh, office. There are uh, Nazarene churches there. 
whose uh, uh, building has been impacted because of the explosion. There's a Nazarene school, which uh, the building there was also impacted. Two of the kids actually, they had to be taken to the hospital because of the glass shattering. And uh, so anyhow, our funds will go there and will support the Nazarene crisis team who's there and helping uh, these Nazarene churches, Nazarene schools and others uh, in that area. So I just would like to encourage you to uh, please go to your uh, phone app or our homepage and, uh, and you can donate funds there. And I just, uh, I'm just so thankful for your uh, generosity. And uh, now uh, I just would like to ask you to please enjoy the, the next time we are going to have a special uh, sermon, a special kitchen table talk with Pastor Steve. And I hope you will enjoy it. Thanks for being with us this morning. Blessing and peace. Yes. This morning we have a special edition of our kitchen table and I have a special guest, uh, Pastor Steve. Hi Steve, how hey, are you doing? Pastor Yanni, good. Good to be with you. Good to be with you, Connect Church. Thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, having our, our, our guest for this segment. Today is a, is a special time when we are going to uh, hopefully uh, talk a little bit uh, about racism and injustice, but um, not in the usual time frame. Uh, maybe we, hopefully we can get a, uh, a little bit deeper into this uh, theme and in, into this issue. So today we are not going to have a, a sermon, a separate sermon. Uh, but I know that Pastor Steve's knowledge and wisdom, uh, that's what we need. And uh, anyhow, it's just so pressure, good to have you. Pressure is on. Yes, it's on. It's on. Um, uh, many of our church members know you. They love you. And every time we have you uh, come as a DS, it's always, uh, you know, people are always pumped and uh, love, love to have you. So thank you so much again for coming. And uh, um, I just, uh, I just wanted to say, tell to the church that we do have a his little bit of history. We do. Uh, do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Back, oh man, I can't remember what year it was, but uh, several years ago, um, uh, we hired Pastor Yanni as our youth pastor at Gateway Community Church in Whitby. It was in Whitby at the time, now it's in Oshawa. But uh, we hired Pastor Yanni as our youth pastor. And um, so we became not only co-workers, but really good friends. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a joy to watch you, Pastor Yanni, how you have developed and matured in your ministry. And uh, almost five years now since you planted uh, Ajax Connect. And so uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so honored to be with you here for this segment. Oh, th thank you, Steve. It's it's been a it's been a great journey, and uh, uh, I still think of you as my mentor. Yeah. Well. Why don't you share with us uh, a little bit um, about racism, injustice? What is your take? Uh, what what do you want to share with us this morning? Sure. Um, I think where I'd like to go is just um, give you a little bit of my journey. Um, as many of you are aware, I was born and grew up in Belize in Central America. Belize is a, a very diverse country. Uh, it has one foot in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and one foot in Central America. So it has that Caribbean flavor, but it also has that Latin American Spanish flavor. So I would like to go there one day, by the way. Hey, come on down, come <laughs> on down. Uh, so it has uh, Creole people, uh, Spanish speaking, uh, Chinese, Arabs, Mennonites, a lot of Mennonites from Canada actually mm -hmm. many years ago migrated to Belize. So um, uh, so that's the context in which I grew up. So racism really back then was not an issue for me. So when I migrated from Belize to the United States uh, back in 1980, wow. as as before you were born, wasn't uh, it? <laughs> it was. It was way before. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when I migrated from Belize to the U.S. to go to university, I was 17 years old mm -hmm. um, and uh, came to the States to go to university. And I was, I was not prepared for what I encountered. It was a totally different society than I was uh, used to. And um, segregation 
-hmm. You know, there's the black part of town, the white part of town. There are white churches, black churches, um, and uh, wherever are you in the states? In Oklahoma. Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, Oklahoma City. And so, uh, you know, I would go to. Uh, I I was I at a Nazarene University, and so there were Nazarene churches close by, predominantly white, and so. I would go there, and um, it, it was just different. I would be one of the only person of color that would be there, and uh, not that anyone treated me uh, badly, but n but no one made you feel welcome. That that uh, must have been really really hard on you. It was. You know, you it walk into a. Uh, a, you know, house of God. Yeah. You want to worship, and yeah. you just felt that you know they they didn't say anything, but just yeah. what you felt. That's right, and 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 it was, um, and it, what what was painful was this is the church I grew up in, right? So, um, so I I decided that I would uh, go visit a black Nazarene church, and um, and just felt the same way because there there was this issue between the black Nazarene church and the white Nazarene mm -hmm. church and because I was attending uh, a, a predominantly white university mm -hmm. I was being chastened why would a black person attend a white university so I, I mean for, for a 17 and then 18 year old person that just blew my mind I, I just did not understand that so uh, struggled with that. In fact, it got to the point where, uh, I, to my bad, mm -hmm. I, I, I actually left the church. I, I stopped attending. Uh, back when, uh, in 1983, or I guess 1982, when Pat and I um, uh, decided that we were going to get married, um, we were trying to decide where we are going to live. So, um, uh, whether it would be Belize or the States or in Canada. Pat and her family had migrated to Canada while I was in Oklahoma. And um, so I took a trip in the summer of 1982. I took a trip to Toronto and just completely fell in love with the city. The diversity of the city. Um, I, I felt at home once again. I felt welcome once again. And uh, so in 1983, when we got married, um, we made the decision that I would move up north. Uh, but it up was north. the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the you summer. You made that decision at the summer, it, right? I made that decision <laughs> the summer of, uh, of 82. And, um, and, and so when we got married in 83 and winter came, it was like, Pat, you didn't tell me about this part, man. Um, so anyway, we, you know, we, we settled down in, in Toronto. And uh, when Pat and I started having kids, and we have three, Nicole, Sean, and Dylan, um, when we started having kids, we, um, we, we were trying to make sure <coughs> that we raised our kids learning to love everybody. And, and of course, Toronto is the perfect place to do that with the diversity. So our kids grew up not feeling different from any other kid around them, you know, whether it was in the community that we lived, or at school, or or at church, they. Um, and that time you were living in Scarborough. We were living in Scarborough. Yeah, yeah, not far from where Rosewood Church is now, um, just south of there, and um, so that's the way we raised our kids. Um, however, the reality hits, and uh, you know, we 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 never spoke about race or differences or anything like that. We just wanted our kids to feel that, you know, we're the same as anyone else. But reality hit. I remember the, uh, the one particular event that took place uh, that was after we moved here to, to Whitby. Um, Dylan was probably in his early teens and uh, him and Pat um, made a run, a late night run to Tim Hortons, not far from here. We've been here 20 years now. Um, and so he made, they made a late night run to Tim Hortons and when they came back they told me what, what happened. Um, Dylan was in line uh, to make his order. 
Pat was Pat waited out in the car, and there were other people, young people, in Tim Hortons at the time. But the police officer came and targeted Dylan, and started asking, "Why are you out so late? How come you're on your own?" Um, there were other kids there as well, but he was targeted, and so uh, he said, M "My mom's right out there in the car." Right. So, um, so that was. That was probably the event in his life, and then other things that took place, similar things, that we decided, okay, we, we need to begin to have conversations with our kids about the, um, sometimes the inequality that takes place, injustice that takes place. We, we support our police officers, we, we, um, uh, but we recognize that sometimes it is even unconsciously that things take place like what took place with Dylan. Um, other times it is systematic that it is just built into the system of what happens around us. So, so um, but regardless, we continued to uh, try to help our kids to love all people. And, um, and Pat and I continued to do that as well and uh, continue to strive to promote love for, for all people to this day. Uh, th thank you so much for sharing. As uh, you know, you were sharing on, on a family level how you experienced it. It's one, day f it's one way for, or one thing for you to experience it and live it through, but when, when you see your children, yeah, yeah. like you, like I know with my children, like I, I love them so much that I would sometimes th wish that the bad things would happen to me yeah. rather to them I and um, and I, I know it impacted him at that night but I'm pre I'm sure it impacted you and uh, and Pat as well and uh, uh, yeah thank, thanks for sharing that yeah. and uh, and another thing you were talking about is that how it at that night you realize that you have to have this conversation with your kids and I think this is what we, one of the things we learned the last couple of months is that um, as early as possible we have to have this conversation with our kids yeah. and uh, yes uh, Toronto and the GTA is diverse which is great but that doesn't mean that uh, we don't have to teach these kind of things to our to our kids yeah. and um, and I, I'm glad that that came up uh, almost naturally yeah 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 I mean <laughs> It, it, it really, we really do, we really do need to have these conversations. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to think that, um, that I or we as a family um, don't love this country. I mean, we are blessed. We, we have been blessed in Canada. As I said, one of the reasons I came here was because I felt at home, I felt, you know, the diversity. Uh, um, in the greater Toronto area especially, but across the country. Um, so we have been a blessed family. But wherever you go, I mean, even when I go back home to Belize now, there are issues of injustice that I see, right? Um, so, so these are things that we need to have the discussions about. And I'm so glad that you, Pastor Yanni, and, and the Connect Church family that you are having these kitchen table discussions that you uh, you have been having them um, the pro the problem the problem is this um, the problem is that we as humans we tend to um, we tend to uh, the problem is othering where we um, we objectify people who are different from us um, you know and and often that comes out of it comes out of ignorance it comes out of um, not spending time with with people of different backgrounds or cult there, there is see in Toronto because we're so diverse we get to be among so many different kinds of people but there is being with people and then there is being with people and getting to understand who they are, what their backgrounds are, what, what are some of the things that, um, 
that that trigger a person, um, a particular culture of people? What are certain words maybe that that are very hurtful to certain uh, cultures? And so a lot of uh, sometimes it, it's about ignorance of just not knowing. And so we'll say something or do something that is very offensive. Um, and, and I have to be careful of that uh, when I'm dealing with all the different cultures. As a district superintendent going to different churches, um, I have to be careful what I say. Um, and so I am continually learning um, how to go about doing that. So, you know, objectifying people, uh, othering them, those people, um, and not taking the time to really understand and know them and know cultures, know backgrounds, know histories, things that have been hurtful in the past. So again, conversations like this is very important. Yeah, thanks. Um, as you were mentioning that you as a, a DS, you have to, you know, go into and look into so many different churches. I mean, I, I, I do not envy you. <laughs> Because, I mean, just the district is so big, right? Like you have churches from, basically from Windsor to Ottawa, all the way up north to, like ev every, oh, everywhere you go, it's, you basically find a different community. And then with that, you find a different church. Yeah. So, and then as you mentioned that, you know, it's a, uh, you have to be sensitive and uh, and that it was just an interesting perspective I would never yeah. think about that yeah. do you have something else maybe you wanted to share in terms of on a district level uh, and then and then later on we'll talk about the local church level yeah yeah well it, what I, you know whether it's the district or the local church um, I yeah there there is just there is just such a diversity of not only cultures because um, th there's just such a diversity of communities. Mm -hmm. You know, Sault Ste. Marie is so different from Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, Hamilton is different from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. You know, so depending on where you are, um, the communities are different and people backgrounds are different. Uh, their perspectives are different. So, um, yeah, as I travel from place to place across our district, uh, 60 churches, I am, I'm privileged, I'm honored to be able to enter into each of those congregations and get to know people um, and, and get to learn how to love people um, who think differently from me sometimes and, and trying to, trying to uh, help pastors and congregations to be healthy and and fruitful, um, yeah, it, it, it uh, takes a certain amount of discernment and wisdom from God to, uh, to go about doing that. So as a, at a district level, that's certainly in play. Um, but also in the, in the local church. Um, like you have been pastoring, you know, in Vid before. 13 years in Whitby and, and then, then in Scarborough. At Scar in Scarborough at Rosewood. We were there for, what, eight, eight years, I think. <clears throat> but whether it's at the local church level or the district level, one of the things that, that the Holy Spirit's really been impressing on my heart um, is that the ch I believe that the church has a huge role to play in, the, in these conversations that we're having in society. I, I, I believe that the church has um, a huge role to play and, and to bring solutions to the table. Um, I'm thinking of a couple things. Uh, the first one is that we as a church, we need to, wherever we see injustice, we need to speak out. We, we cannot uh, we cannot be silent. We, we need to speak out. Um, the, the prophet Micah in the Old Testament um, speaks to this when in uh, Micah chapter 6, um, starting, at, uh, starting at verse 6, chapter 6 verse 6 says, um, What can we bring to the Lord? 
what kinds of offerings should we give him? Should we bow before God with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our, our firstborn children to pay for our sins? So he's asking, you know, what, what is it that we're supposed to be doing as the people of God? In today's context, that would be, are we supposed to go to church every Sunday? Are we supposed to read our Bibles every day? Are we supposed to pray every day, give our tithes and offering? Should we uh, encourage, our, encourage our kids instead of being doctors and lawyers to become pastors, you know? And, and, um, and then he answers the question. He says, um, he says, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. He's not saying that all these other things were bad, they're good things, but, but then he says, this is what really matters to God. He says, uh, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you. Not just suggests, but he requires of you. He says, to do what is right. And in, that's the New Living Translation. The NIV says, to act justly, to, to, uh, to act with justice. Um, and uh, to speak out when there is injustice, and then to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So um, wherever, wherever injustice is, we as a church, we need to speak out. We cannot, if we are silent, then we become complicit to what is happening. And, and so I, I believe the church really needs to uh, to to bring that to the table. If, uh, yeah. And then the, the second thing that I believe the church needs to bring to the table is this, that, that we need to practice holy love within the church. Um, that we need to practice that within the church. Part, part of that is, is recognizing that we need the Holy Spirit to infuse us um, with that holy love. We, we, can't, we can't do it on our own. We need, to, we need the Holy Spirit to infuse us with His power and, and His love in us. And, and in that way, we then become part of the answer to Jesus' high priestly prayer, mm -hmm. where in, in John 17, he, he, sa he says, I, he's talking to his father, he says, I pray that they, including us, his disciples, uh, that they would be one. And, and just as you and I are one, uh, as you are in me and I am in you, that may, may be one so that the world may know that you have sent me. And um, so it seems like this oneness yeah. is really... Uh, you think it's a key oh man uh, factor here it, it's a key factor um, and I'm so glad that um, you know the connect church family is a diverse church family and many of our churches in the GTA are are very diverse and it reflects the oneness of, of God um, Father Son and Holy Spirit but one and and he invites us into that relationship that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has. And we become one with Him and with each other. And uh, if, if we don't practice that in the church, Pastor Yanni, then we lose all credibility in the broader community of speaking to issues like the injustice that we see around us. And right now, the particular injustice that we are speaking to is racial injustice and systematic injustice. And, and so my prayer for the church, my prayer for Connect Church, for you um, and for your people and for the churches across our district is that we would display the oneness that we have in Christ, that uh, we would display holy love even to those who would lash out at us because I am different from them. Um, whether it's out of ignorance or whether it's, you know, they just, that's just what they want to do. Um, but that 
even in the midst of that, I would display holy love towards that person. But when I see it uh, being done to someone else, that I speak out, um, I speak out very strongly against that injustice against someone else. When it's done to me, that I respond in love. And when I'm squeezed, that, that the holy love of Christ comes oozing out of, of me. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for the church. Yeah. Thank you. As, as you were talking, you mentioned the uh, holy love a couple of times. And uh, as I was listening to you, it's, it always just, uh, it came into my mind, um, as you mentioned it, that, you know, one of the best way how we can see that holy love, that's, that's in Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, if we take a look at the New Testament, we would see stories after stories how, how Jesus would respond to people and uh, and we see that even his disciples many times didn't understand or 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 even the disciples wouldn't respond the same way as jesus was like for example jesus went and hang out with the tax collectors he he was he was spending time with prostitutes like people people hated the tax collectors because they were taking their money right. and they were giving it to rome yeah. plus they would ac actually take some more yeah. So, so they, they felt that, you know, that like, they hated those people. And then females in general, 2000 years ago in the, in a country of Middle East, they had, they, they didn't have value. That's right. And then when you, when you say that, okay, it's not just, not just a female, but a prostitute or, or other stories, we see that, uh, you know, women came to him uh, who were sick. Like when people were the sick, the woman caught in adultery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when people were sick at that time, you know, others looked at that as God is punishing that mm -hmm. person, or, or they would think that oh, and it's in the Bible too. So like, what did he, her parents do that God would punish? Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so like we see these people in the in the New Testament who were really looked down. Uh, they were at the very edge of the society, and and Jesus constantly is, was. Uh, breaking these barriers and uh, and he would he would speak up and he would love everyone equally and and he just wanted to make sure that everyone is part part of the kingdom no matter maybe they were from an other country which was again very looked down upon at that time they were you know it says that men and and women uh, slaves or free everybody everybody is is one in in in, in, in Christ that was Paul says later yeah. So, so anyhow, I, I, just, I just think it's, it's uh, in the last couple of months, again, I was always reminded that how Jesus was, was freely meeting with people, talking with people, loving people, and, uh, and that, that's the kind of holy love yeah. I think we were talking about. It's Absolutely. just, you know, breaking down barriers, um, going after people and just love them and support them. And, 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 and that's, I mean, this, this, whole idea of you know injustice it's a very complex yeah. thing and but but i believe that at, at least if we do this one thing that we really love everybody uh, support everybody and speak up yeah. what you said yeah. and and then i i also wanted to mention that one of the kitchen table talk it came up that yes we have to pray but we have to act that's right. so that's why these two component is really important and, and this is a situation, is the, I, I believe, is, is the same. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, for, of course. Um, th there's, there's good news. You know, you mentioned about the, the perfect display of holy love is found in Christ. One of the things that encourages me is that um, Jesus, everything that Christ did while he was on earth was done in his capacity as a human mm -hmm. you know he, he was fully God but he was fully human so everything the miracles he performed um, the the compassion that he showed was done as a human mm -hmm. and the only way he accomplished it was through the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. right we uh, talked about that when uh, we had a series on the spiritual gifts oh did you yeah so yeah so oh good good yeah. so this this dovetails here and so it is encouraging to me that when I look at the life of Christ and the fact that he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to love the way you described, 
um, that that's available for for you and me. Mm -hmm. We can't we can't muster up the kind of love that we need to have for each other and for the person who is othering me and for the person who is uh, doing injustice. We can't muster up the kind of holy love that we're talking about in and of our own selves. Uh, the only way it's going to happen is through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. I, I tell, if we have time, yeah, I tell um, I tell this story as an analogy to to this, uh, to what we just said about the power of the Holy Spirit. You you watch uh, Back to the Future? Yes. All right. Remember the first one? Yes. So Marty um, goes back to 1955, is it? And uh, in, in the time machine, the car, and uh, but he doesn't have power to get back, right? Okay. So he meets Doc okay. and he tells Doc how much power is needed to get this car going and get back to 1985. And, and Doc Brown says, 1.2 gigawatts <laughs> like where that doesn't exist in 1955 but Marty had a flyer in his pocket that was um, from 1985 when they were raising funds to uh, to replace the clock tower okay. that a lightning struck and it had the time and everything right so then they knew that lightning would strike in 1955 at that point and Doc Brown says this is the power that we need the lightning strikes the, cl the clock tower and gives if you've seen the if you haven't seen it go take a look at it you'll know <laughs> what I'm talking about but for that car that was the only power that can get it back to 1985 for us the only way we can display that holy love to people around us. The only way you can do it, folks, is through the power of the Holy Spirit. When you are being lashed out at, um, the power of the Holy Spirit will allow you to have the sweet love of Jesus as you are squeezed, the sweet love of Jesus to be squeezed out of you. When you are uh, among people that you don't understand, that are different from you, the only way you are going to act in holy love towards those people, um, rather than othering them and objectifying them, is through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells inside every person who believes in Jesus and who has asked Him into their hearts and into their lives. So I'm encouraged by that that we have the power to do this. We have access it's, to it. it. We have access to it, yeah. yeah. I think that's a, a, a very good uh, way of finishing this talk. Um, you know, through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, we are empowered to do all this. Uh, we as individuals, as families, and, uh, and as the local church. Thank you so much for coming and having this conversation with good us. To be with you, uh, yeah. Connect Church, thank you so much for watching us. and. Uh, we just uh, pray that uh, God would bless you and your family. Uh, have an awesome rest of the Sunday. Blessing and peace. God bless.
joining us. God bless you this week. Uh, share this link. Share our, our website. Not, not so we have more viewers, but that you can share God and share Christ 
with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers. Be blessed. God loves you. We love you. Have a great week.